Professor Rashmi Dalvi, uh, who is a world-known pediatric oncologist, I uh, Asia past president. She was a pioneer in the development and promotion of uh, pediatric hematology oncology subspecialty in India. She was the chair of National Pediatric Hemonc Society in India and uh, led many committees uh, within the international uh, pediatric oncology community. I'm giving the floor to Professor uh, Rashmi Dalvi to share her experience on uh, on pediatric oncology developments uh, on the over the decades. And uh, I would ask you to talk also specifically about the uh, about the pediatric cancer drug developments and why we are lagging behind and if there are I mean what kind of disparities there are in the field. Right. Um, so thank you, Gevog. And first of all, congratulations on organizing this Oncothon. It's a great concept to raise awareness on childhood cancer. And uh, also congratulations on the great progress uh, you and your colleagues are doing in Armenia. Also, a big thank you to Onco Heroes Biosciences for taking up the cause of drug development for uh, childhood cancer. So uh, I have had uh, over 40 years of experience uh, in uh, pediatric oncology in uh, India, which is uh, LMIC, as you know. And um, as you know, that uh, you know, uh, demographic trends indicate a rising incidence overall in LMIC is about where about 80% of childhood cancer occurs. And uh, it is estimated that uh, over 6 million cases we'll see in the next 25 years and nearly half are going to go diagnosed. And the five-year net survival is going to be uh, estimated to be less than 40%. And the challenges that I'm going to mention today are something which most LMICs would be, uh, you know, encountering. And uh, these are related to patients, then the, uh, the, the patients who come for diagnosis, their care, enabling their care, survivors, and then research and uh, innovation. So uh, with respect to patients, the first problem that we encountered, uh, and we still continue to encounter to a great extent, is lack of awareness. First of all, that cancer can occur in children. Uh, and this uh, lack of awareness is both in the public as well as in primary care physicians, you know, pediatricians and general practitioners. Second, lack of awareness that childhood cancer is curable. And uh, so, and the third, third problem is that uh, in many uh, of our kind of countries, diagnosis of cancer is a socio-cultural stigma and they don't like to talk about it. All this is compounded by barriers uh, to access to care. And uh, this results in delayed diagnosis and advanced disease at presentation, which makes it more difficult to treat. At a broader level, uh, you know, we, uh, they, there are weak healthcare systems in LMICs that are competing national health priorities. Uh, you know, poverty and hunger, environmental disasters, political crisis, war, and also that, uh, you know, developing drugs for pediatric cancers, which is a small uh, say, small percentage of uh, cancers overall, is uh, not great business sense, you know, uh, is what it is looked at. So uh, as far as, you know, the, the challenges that uh, we, fare, uh, we face, this is with respect to diagnosis, coming to the care of these patients, uh, one major problem we face is treatment refusal or abandonment. And this is largely because of the cost of treatment, you know, because insurance often is not available, a lot of out-of-pocket expenditures, there's family dislocation because cancer is treated only in large metropolises. And so they have to travel, dislocate the whole family and travel uh, a long way for treatment. This is compounded uh, when we are treating patients by malnutrition, infection, very high uh, level of drug toxicity that we see and this results in a higher morbidity which translates into greater mortality and also is another cause for abandonment of treatment so the bottom line for everything is resource restriction so there's limited diagnostics limited healthcare manpower expensive protocols that are used expensive pro supportive care that is needed hospital infrastructure often is not uh, ideal or available the other thing I want to say is that in LMIC is, you know, uh, the first chance for treatment is the best chance. So you have to give the best possible treatment at the first shot because salvage treatment for refractory relapse disease is difficult and is a much bigger challenge. So uh, this is about, uh, you know, the care uh, of patients. And then, uh, of course, uh, you know, we have uh, survivors and uh, there are challenges uh, that are faced uh, by survivors. 
uh, with respect to rehabilitation and even uh, survivorship is also a stigma that many of our survivors do not follow up because they don't want to let anyone know that they have had cancer in the past even if they are cured insurance is a problem for them uh, rehabilitation so they do not come back uh, for all the survivorship health issues and so on uh, so uh, so these are the various uh, challenges uh, that we uh, face and uh, uh, regarding what you said about drug development uh, yes it is a major uh, challenge because there are very few people like uh, onco heroes that uh, you have uh, you know uh, come across who are willing to uh, you know work for uh, developing drugs for childhood cancer for all the various reasons that i mentioned it's not good business sense it's a very small segment also most of the childhood cancers are treatable by uh, a few simple drugs which also some of these uh, pharmaceuticals are not willing to continue manufacturing so uh, these are some of the problems but everything is not uh, so dark so uh, you know uh, i just want to give uh, if you give me two more minutes i can just give you the story of how india has developed uh, pediatric oncology over these four decades so the yes. and uh, the same uh, same same uh, pattern probably uh, and pathway exists for uh, all uh, such countries so uh, basically first of all you have to have uh, a pediatric oncology community so physicians surgeons uh, who uh, and uh, healthcare professionals interested in treating children with cancer coming together for this cause and uh, so so now we have a much larger community initially it was just a uh, physician uh, i mean pediatric oncologists a few surgeons and radiotherapists then networking and collaborations is the next thing that uh, you know came our way and uh, our interactions with siop and uh, siop podc pediatric oncology in developing countries uh, as it was called then so gave us a good platform for discussing our problems and getting help from them likewise networking collaborations also uh, you know uh, come across with through institutions uh, in developed countries through mentors uh, that we may have had when we have trained as well as through philanthropic uh, organizations so all these collaborations and networking help helped us to develop the infrastructure and uh, the possibility of uh, treating childhood cancer well then the next step was to identify what problems that we had and try to find out solutions so we found that you know delayed diagnosis abandonment was our biggest problem so we developed a program for training pediatricians to help them uh, you know diagnose early and we got help financial help from siop uh, and who for the same over time then we had improved supportive care we had adapted uh, treatment protocols then we developed a training program in pediatric oncology to help uh, you know in increase the tribe of pediatric oncologists in our country then came you know the era of uh, ngos funding and national schemes uh, came up you know uh, money started coming from various sources so that helped improve uh, various things then uh, you know data is everything you know so unless you are able and willing to share your data and work together it will not work so the next step was you know uh, people got together sh to share data and then we have developed this indian national pediatric hematology oncology group now we are get, have got into clinical trials and uh, things like that so we have improved a lot in the sense that from our uh, survival rates of uh, like between 10 and 20% 40 years ago we are now you know uh, uh, around 40% or little more and even better in some of the institutions uh, but uh, and even uh, but some diseases and uh, groups uh, are still not doing well whereas some diseases and patient groups are comparable to western uh, standards you know now uh, even newer therapies you know bone marrow transplantation uh, immuno oncology these are expensive but through these uh, you know funding agencies we are able to give it it is not available for every single patient that needs it but from a place where we were where nothing was available we have our own uh, you know colleagues from the tata memorial hospital who have developed car t cell therapy locally indigenous so i think these are some of the things to do that you know research and there are barriers to research as well and uh, uh, some of these barriers are that uh, you know because of the high research needs money that is the bottom line but second thing is because of the high patient load clinicians do not have the you know uh, protected time for research okay and uh, most of the research happens in developing uh, developed countries for uh, 
at another level altogether. But what we need is innovations and research to find local solutions to our problems, which we can then share with you know other LMICs. So uh, research is uh, something that is uh, needed, and uh, even drug development. And uh, of course, there is a lot of awareness and uh, conscience about pediatric uh, drug drug development, but it's still a long way to go. And you know, uh, people like uh, Onco Heroes, I think, uh, I, I hope there are more heroes of this kind uh, in the world. So I'll just end by saying that uh, uh, my message is that childhood cancer is curable. Today, no child should die of cancer without being given the chance to uh, be cured. And every single person can help make a difference. Let us all help navigate these families through their cancer journey and enable a healthy and able survivorship. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Dahl, for bringing the perspective uh, from the LMICs and for, like showing also the other side of the coins. And thank you for, for your uh, like a uh, positive note at the end. Uh, I'm sure together we'll be able to make a lot, of, a lot of changes when our community is united. And I'm sure this Onkoton is one of the examples where we can show this shared Absolutely. commitment. Thank you very much.